Hi guys, welcome to uh, another Q&A with Ian A. Um, this one's been a fairly hot topic and I get a lot of requests for it and I'm really not ready to go fully into the saber yet. Yes, it's the topic is the Naper Saber. Um, I wanted to do an episode on the Naper Saber and I want to do a very detailed episode that gives you information on the engine and uh, kind of explains a little bit of the history of the engine and its use with the uh, Typhoon and Tempest and possibly delve into some of the other aircraft that it was tried in or trialed in. Um, but this is what we've got sitting in the shop and I think this is what's probably getting most of uh, everybody's interest. Some of the old videos show it, some of the videos I'm filming now show it in the background and uh, everybody loves the Sabre. So this is the Sabre that we have in our collection. You're all right in assuming this will not fly. It is uh, potentially a good source for data where we don't have it, um, but we also have a lot of data. So um, it's good to have this as an example. It's amazing to stand behind this and uh, and to see it. What you'll notice first off is that the um, the gear reduction is snapped off, and that's pretty typical when Typhoons crashed under power. Uh, they swing a 14 foot diameter propeller and the first thing to go is here. The prop shaft, rear of the prop shaft would go in this hole. This is the upper crankshaft, lower crankshaft, and these are the uh, the drives for the sleeve mechanism on either side. They also have a flex shaft that goes back to the supercharger. So, um, This one was a crash recovered engine. I don't know the full history on it. And uh, we've got the upper accessory case and the lower accessory case. You might have seen some pictures of those in previous um, films or some of the slideshows that we've done. They're both magnesium, so to have them actually survive is quite impressive. Uh, there's a lot of data contained in those. We don't have full drawings for them, so that's definitely a benefit. Um, as you can see back here, there's a couple more parts that are in our stores, um, including the uh, Kaufman starter and, and things like that. There's a starter housing that goes here. You can see that gear has been broken. Um, but all in all, it's in interesting shape. There's, uh, my understanding is that it was in mud and uh, quite well preserved. You can see that some areas must have had some oxygen getting to them and the corrosion is horrendous. These are the junk heads, that one's absolutely toast. But then you look at the one that's right next to it and it's beautiful. <laughs> so it, uh, it must have had some pockets of air. You go along, you see another good one and then another junk one. So it was quite well preserved. Um, there's original paint markings on it, which really we haven't been able to decipher. This one is HL, Hotel Lima 819. And it's uh, hard to make out, but it's an original wartime paint marking. As well as over here on this intake, you can see there is 228. And I did research that one a little bit, thinking that it might have been Hawker Typhoon uh, Echo Kilo 228, but uh, it turns out it's not. That uh, aircraft crashed on land and nowhere near mud. So. It's still an unknown engine. These accessory cases, upper and lower, they, um, my understanding is they came from a different aircraft. And I'm assuming this data plate was on there because it was glued to it, but who knows? It could have been from an, another engine altogether. So at least two engines, possibly three, and the serial number is uh, burnt off of this one. So Naper Saber 2A and you can see all the patents on it, um, which are interesting. If you go to the countries, I'll zoom in on that if you guys wanna get geeky with me, but uh, if you go to all the countries listed there, I know I've gone through uh, Canada's patents and they're still listed in the patent office. So it's pretty general information, but uh, it's neat to go see and see that that stuff's still held. Um, the hydraulic pump is still attached. I just recently uh, purchased another hydraulic pump their live line Dowdy pumps. This is the location here for the magnetos. There's one on either side and then the distributor. So if we go to this side, we have one magneto at this time and we're always looking for more. These are uh, BTH magnetos, just like on the Merlin, British Thompson Houston. Um, and this is part number uh, C1SE-ES, uh, Air Ministry stamp on it there. Um, but yeah, we're looking for more magnetos. We are looking for distributors uh, that fit here and um, any other accessories that might be available. Spark plugs would be really nice too. There's a little bit of discussion going on with spark plugs right now uh, about their length. Uh, from my, what I understand, this Antares uses uh, quite a long plug. 
but I had a look at the plugs that we've got here. We've got the part numbers for them as well, and they are um, they're the same length as what the Merlin had. So a little bit of work to do there, but we're always looking for that kind of stuff. Um, but essentially, this air, uh, engine will be used for static display. I would really like to put the time into it to clean it up and make it uh, basically rebuild it. We've got all the, the data required to make the front gear reduction housing and the prop shafts and all that stuff. Um, but it's not a priority at the moment. It is something that can be salvaged very well for static display though and definitely help preserve the history of this amazing engine. So if you guys know of anybody out there that has any accessories or components from Sabres, please do let us know. We're always looking out for extra parts. Um, one other interesting thing, there's a lot of stampings on here. These, there's a serial number here, but it's the serial number of the cylinder block. There's, the Sabre is built in two crankcase halves and then cylinder blocks. So four main uh, components, each individually serialized. So without the serial number of the engine, we don't really know exactly what this was. But one thing that's a bit of a tip is this. And that is, this is the rear engine mount. If you remember from the episode I did uh, not too long ago with the uh, cross tubes for the cockpit section where I was pulling bolts, there was a pin. And you can see the holes. Uh, one of the bolts had a pin type head on it. And it was designed to sit in those two holes there. But the Typhoon, with its vibration issues, had um, uh, vibration transferred from the engine. The Sabre had its own vibration issues that were solved as well, or mostly resolved. And I believe that was mostly because of the length of the crankshafts on them. Um, but the vibration from the engine was transferred directly through these solid steel feet into that cross member. And that cross member was the spar carry through which everything else was attached. So vibration just went right through the airframe. So later Typhoons, were fitted with a uh, rubberized rear mount to help isolate some of that vibration. So this is quite an early one. It's an assumption that it's a fairly early uh, Napier Sabre Mark IIA. Um, you've probably also seen the uh, supercharger that we have. Again, I'm not too sure what engine that came from. It might have been the one that the accessory cases came from. It may have been part of uh, what this aircraft was fitted with, but again, that's a mag uh, magnesium assembly, and magnesium doesn't survive well, so we're really fortunate to have been able to take that and uh, pull it apart. And then even more fortunate that our sponsor, E3D Technology over in Langley, took that and uh, created some uh, amazing work for reverse engineering the, uh, the profiles of this thing. So we'll do a, an episode specifically on that supercharger work and what E3 did uh, to it because it's absolutely amazing. And we'll involve them with it because they'll speak to it a lot better than I could. So that's our Sabre guys. Like I say, this is not gonna be used for anything other than reference and uh, obtaining some details that may be missed in drawings and other information that we have. Um, but we are working on other sabers, and uh, I appreciate your patience. I will be putting together a very detailed Napier Saber episode um, in the future once we have a little bit more information with some of the things that we're doing right now. So please, uh, please have a look at it. If you guys know of anything that's sitting in a barn or who knows where some of this stuff ends up, magnetos, distributors, spark plugs, any accessories that go on here, more hydraulic pumps, all of that stuff is going to be very, very, very much needed. Um, not only to get our Sabre running, future Sabre running, but also to uh, maintain operations with it. So guys, that's the Sabre um, that you see in the background. That's the Sabre you guys are asking about. And I know you want to know more about uh, the Sabre that's going to be used in this aircraft, but I can't give you too much information about what's going on right now, but I will as soon as I can. It's exciting for us too. So another question that's come up in regards to power plants on the Typhoon is the uh, Rolls-Royce Griffin. No, it's not an engine that ever flew with the Typhoon, but it's very close in size, weight, and power to the early Sabres, and would technically be fairly um, easy to fit into a, a Typhoon without any external modifications. So the, I've mentioned the Griffin in the past as well, and the idea behind the Griffin is that it would be a good interim engine should the airframe be done well before a Sabre would be done. To keep this project realistic, I'm not good at giving you guys uh, deadlines. I'm not going to say 
we're going to have this done in five or 10 or 15 years. I typically tell people, and it doesn't matter if you've asked me this in 2013 or you ask me this now, I say 20 years. I say 20 years because there's so many variables um, in this project that can affect the length of time that it takes us to, uh, to produce components for it, to produce the airframe, to certify an Aper Sabre engine. It's not easy to do any of this stuff, so I don't want to commit to a timeline. Um, the Sabre's a rare beast, for sure, uh, but I think if you look at the number of Sabres that are out there and compare them to the number of Hawker Typhoon wings that are out there, you'll notice that there's less Typhoon wings and we've accomplished that, so bear with us. We're going to make a Sabre happen and we're going to make it happen to fly in JP843. That's the way Typhoons were built. So um, the Griffin potentially could be a replacement in term if our airframe is complete and we've got it sitting on the ground and have the opportunity to put it in the air, uh, a Griffin will be looked at uh, as an interim engine until the Sabre is ready. So I hope that helps answer some of your guys' questions. Like I say, a lot of uh, detailed information will be forthcoming uh, when I do an episode specifically on the Sabre, but that's got to wait until I get some stuff done here at this end, and I will be sure to share it with all of you guys. Thank you guys for all the questions. I look forward to many more, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. If you can, please head over and subscribe to our paid channel, or just subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. It makes a huge difference with us guys, and every one of you is helping us on our journey here to get JP843 back in the air. Thank you so much. Cheers.